What is up guys and welcome back to another tier list ranking and this is going to be a kickoff of a multi-episode series going over horror franchises. So this idea that I had is to take a bunch of horror franchises of which I'm starting with 33 and we're going to go over just the original film in this video. And then in about a week or so, we'll go over the second film, a week or so after that, the third film, and so on and so forth until we are out of franchises or until there's not enough left to merit a video. Thought it would be a cool idea. Not often do you see a ranking where we only talk about the third film in a franchise or the fourth film in a franchise. So if you enjoyed this one, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you do not miss the rest of this series. The categories of this tier list from best to worst are going to be horror classics, bloody good time, kills two hours, painful, and slow death. One more thing that I need to say before we get started, there might be a couple of movies or franchises on here that you don't consider to be horror franchises. I tried to keep them predominantly horror, but there's a few that I included that are somewhat horror or mostly horror, but certainly rub shoulders with other genres. If it's going to annoy you that I talk about those movies and franchises, I genuinely don't give a fuck. Are you the gatekeeper? Just earmuff it when I'm talking about those movies and you will be just fine. So kicking off with Paranormal Activity, this one is gonna go into Kills 2 Hours. I'm not a big fan of this franchise. I'm not a big fan of found footage films. I think that there's some good scares in this one, like most of the Paranormal Activity movies, but they're all like in the last 10 minutes of the movie. The rest of it's kind of a direct to get through. So this is not a film that has very much, if any, rewatch value for me, and it is by no means a horror classic. Coming up next is the original Psycho. And while this might disappoint a few people, I'm gonna stick it in bloody good time. This is not my favorite of the Psycho franchise, and while I certainly respect this movie, and I do enjoy it, I mean, it's almost at the top there, there is some aspects of it that have aged for me, and it's not a movie that I have the strong desire to go back and rewatch all the time. So I love it to death. I really respect the legacy. I respect how awesome it was when it first debuted. And uh, the franchise, a very good franchise, very underrated franchise that it birthed, but it is not one of my favorites of all time. Coming up next, we have The Purge. This one is a kills two hours. I think that there's some good movies in the Purge franchise. I don't think it's the best franchise in the world, but the first film was certainly a bit of a misfire. I love Ethan Hawke and I love the idea of it, but I, along with pretty much everybody else, watched this first film and said, you know what would make a more interesting movie? Seeing somebody out in the world experiencing the Purge. And that's what we got for pretty much the rest of this franchise. So it's a decent movie. It's not terrible, but it's certainly not uh, the best of the franchise. It didn't kick it off with a bang. We'll say that. Next up, we got The Goat, Nightmare on Elm Street. Don't even need to waste time. Absolute horror classic. One of the best horror films ever made and birthed one of my favorite franchises of all time. There's very little negative that I have to say about this movie aside from the last like three minutes of it, but everything else is just some of the best shit ever. It's my favorite Wes Craven movie. Uh, you guys that have been following me for a while, I don't even know why I'm explaining this. You know it's gonna be on there. John Carpenter's Halloween. Well, let's go ahead and get the hate train started. And I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's a horror classic. Come on, guys. No! I do think it's a little bit overrated because there is a certain percentage of horror fans that act like this movie is God's gift to Earth, but it is still a horror classic. I love John Carpenter. He's probably my favorite director. This is one of his best films. This is still the best of that franchise, and it's just a great exercise of simplistic horror. You got a very simplistic idea with a very simplistic concept for a killer and he executes it to perfection because John Carpenter is the fucking man. And now we have the original Jaws and this is absolutely a horror classic. This is one of the best and honestly one of the movies that just ages the best. I mean this is a movie that created an entire generation of people that were terrified to go in the water. It is one of those kind of blessings in disguise that they did not have a work shark because they wanted to put it in the movie a lot more and it's the fact that you don't see the shark very much that makes it so effective and scary so just a great story great characters and it's absolutely timeless moving on from that we have the original exorcist and just like with psycho go ahead and send the hate mail in now i'm putting it in bloody good time those of you guys that saw my review series of this last year or was that 2020 i don't know within the last two years i did a review series on this and 
this has never been a movie that I have loved. I've always found it a little bit overhyped, a little bit overrated. It's a good story. It's definitely something that I could see being really shocking and just a, a huge bomb getting dropped back in the 70s whenever it released. But I think there's aspects of it that I've just never really been able to get that fully into. I'm not the biggest fan of demon possession and exorcism movies. And a lot of that has to do with the movies that came after The Exorcist that just tried to do the same thing over and over again. So... Just my experience with it. I do really enjoy the film. I, I respect its legacy, but it is not one of my favorites. And going along with that is the original Scream. I've said it a dozen times at this point. I am a very casual Scream fan. There was an era in my life where I did not even like these movies, including the original one. I've come around. I've grown to really like this franchise. It's still not one of my favorites. I definitely prefer straightforward horror and not the, the meta horror comedy stuff. That's just my own personal preference, but this is my favorite of the franchise. I've grown to appreciate it a lot more for how clever and creative it was and for really giving horror the kick in the ass that it needed in the mid 90s and this continues to be one of the best and one of the most consistent quality horror franchises out there now we have the original phantasm boy right up to horror classics this has always been one of my favorites i love this franchise uh, really if we're being honest only the first two films are really worth talking about but uh, we'll get into that as we get further in this little tier list series but the first film i think is an absolute classic it's not for everybody there's certainly people that can watch this and don't quite get it don't quite like the the trippy uh cerebral aspect to it or don't really think it ages all that well and that's totally fair uh, i have a lot of nostalgia for it so I don't really get bogged down by that too much but I think it's a great original horror film it's got a great villain in the tall man I love the dynamic of the three main characters I think it's genuinely creepy I think it holds up pretty damn well so that is just my opinion Coming up next, we have The Conjuring, and this is going up to Bloody Good Time. This is certainly one of the best of that genre. As far as hauntings and haunted houses and demon possession and all that, this is one of the best modern versions of those movies. But as I said with The Exorcist, that's not really my favorite subgenre of horror. It's very, very overexposed and overstuffed, and so even the great ones like The Conjuring, I can't love it on the level that some of you can. I think that it's among James Wan's best films. It's certainly an argument for his scariest film. There's a lot of great creativity here with the scares, the jump scares especially. James James Wan's kind of the master at doing those the right way. A uh, really good story here with two different families, the Warrens and the people that are kind of the subject of the haunting. It's a really good movie, and I actually thought it was even more effective at home than it was in the theater. Very odd, but it was. Thou shall not fall, horror classic bitches. The Lost Boys, as you guys know that have been following me for a while, this is often in competition for my favorite horror film of all time. If you're just finding me for the first time, this is often in competition for my favorite horror film of all time. I love The Lost Boys. It's one of those movies that I grew up watching constantly. I'm surprised I didn't rip the tape off of the spools back in the old VHS days. I just love the style of this. I love the characters, the soundtrack. It's such a unique, cool fun and timeless vampire film and i love vampire movies i would actually love to do one of these just on vampire flicks because that is one of my favorite subgenres of horror and one of my favorite movie monsters of all time and it's just a timeless classic for me every single time i rewatch it i love it just as much as i did the first time the blair witch project here is where i'm going to really divide people this is going to go straight to painful and i really debated on putting it in slow death look i get it if you watched this in the theaters back when this first came out in 1999 and you bought into all of the hype and all the rumors about this being actual footage and these were actual people, I totally understand, respect, and envy the fact that you had that experience with this movie. I have not had that experience with it. I didn't watch it until years later because I don't really care for found footage. And the three times that I have given this movie a chance, I genuinely do not like it. This is one of those like horror classics that I can say wholeheartedly that I almost hate because every time I watch it, it just, the shaky cam, the characters, the screaming, the low quality, it just grinds my gears and borderline gives me a headache. I don't find the movie that scary because I know it's fake. I didn't have that awesome isolated experience of thinking this might be real. I really wish I did. I genuinely wish I did, but I unfortunately missed the boat on it. So now taking the movie on its own merits, once you know that it's fake, I've just never been able to understand the classic that everybody else sees. Now we have the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. 
and this is going up into bloody good time. I'll be honest, it borders on kills two hours for me. This is another one of those movies that I feel like has not aged as well as some people like to think that it does. I'm one of those people that really prefer the remake, uh, the 2003 remake. That was the first Texas Chainsaw movie that I saw, so keep that in mind when I say that. But the original film is something that's going for a little bit of that snuff film, exploitation, like grindhouse feel to it. And it certainly adds to the vibe that they're going for. It adds to the tension and the horror and this kind of real world, this could actually happen quality. I mean, they actually say this did happen. <laughs> it's, a, it's not a true story whatsoever, but they're going for that vibe with it and they achieve that. 100%. Like, this is an absolute masterpiece by Toby Hooper if you're looking for that type of film. I'm just somebody that doesn't really find myself that entertained with that type of film. I love the style of it. I love the realism. I love the minimalism in it. A lot of people think this is a really gory movie, and it's actually not. And of course, Leatherface is a horror icon. You know, his franchise is a little bit rough, but I understand why this movie birthed an icon like him. And I'll be honest, it's the last 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes of this film that really makes it rough to rewatch because it's just an agonizing experience. It's a lot of screaming and yelling and just like mental torture, which I know is intended. I know they intended that, but it's not a movie that I particularly have a lot of fun watching. So that's why I've always preferred the remake. But with that being said, I still totally acknowledge and respect the hell out of the legacy of the original, certainly enough to put it in bloody good time. They're here. Poltergeist is going right up to horror classics, and if you guys watched my 31 on 31 Unholy Terrors from last year, you know that I have been kicking myself in the ass ever since last year about why I have not watched this movie more. I don't really know why. This is a movie that I saw as a kid, and for whatever reason, I just never really revisited it that much, and so when I revisited it for that ranking last year, I was shocked at how much I loved this movie. I was like, oh my god, this is a movie that I should have been watching once a year my entire life, all that wasted time. I think that it's such a classic. It blends the horror and like the supernatural and the, the family friendly aspects that it's going for, kind of that Amblin entertainment era kind of vibe perfectly. I mean, it's a movie that it's kind of shocking that it's PG. You know, this is back before they had PG-13, but there's some pretty gnarly gore effects in here. You know, the guy ripping his face off in the mirror. It's genuinely creepy, but it's still got that heartwarming family aesthetic to it as well. So this is one of those movies that I just... I have no idea why I, I've, n I've taken this long to realize how awesome that it is. It's a classic in my mind, and from now on, I will certainly be rewatching it more often than I have. And now we have Critters. Sorry, Brian Lomax, but it's going in kills two hours. I watched all of these movies for the very first time a couple of years ago, back when we did the 31 on 31 creature feature. And so there were five movies in this franchise. Uh, my buddy Brian Lomax, hence my joke, uh, is a big fan of the first two, and so he really hyped this up for me. I watched it, and it's fine. You know, the first film is fine. It, it, it's definitely kind of a Gremlins ripoff, which it's not really exactly trying to hide that fact, but I much preferred Gremlins if I had to pick between the two. I, I like the sci-fi aspect of this. I think that the Krites are a pretty cool little unique villain. Uh, I love the fact that Dee Wallace is in this, the little small farmhouse feel to it. So it's got some merit to it, but I think I just walked into it expecting way too much. Maybe if I rewatch these first two films after putting a little bit more distance between my experience in 2020, I might like it a little bit more. Right now it's a movie that I can kind of take or leave. Now we are at the original Blade, and remember what I said at the beginning of this video, guys. Don't care if you don't find that horror I do, and it's going up in bloody good time. I absolutely love this character. I love this franchise. I even have fun with the third one. It's not a very good movie, but I have fun with it. Uh, this was back before, and I didn't even realize it was a comic book movie until years later, but this was before comic book films were the juggernaut that they are now. This is one of those premiere movies like X-Men and the original Spider-Man that really kicked off this new era of comic book films where people actually started to take them seriously from behind the camera as well as people viewing the movie in theaters. And I just love this. Like I said, I'm a big vampire fan, so I love the different 
comic book aesthetic we get with this with the character and the lore there how he's a day walker because he was half human half vampire i love the action in this one um and it still really holds on to that horror it doesn't lose it like i'm afraid the new mcu version of this character is probably going to do immediately so i love wesley snipes in the role one of the coolest movie characters of all time it's not my favorite in the franchise, but it's still one of my favorite vampire movies. Speaking of one of my favorite vampire movies, Fright Night is absolutely the definition of horror classic. I love this movie more every single time that I watch it, and I have always loved it. This was one of those little hidden gems that I found. Uh, me and my dad were watching, like, flicking through the channels at, like, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning one day whenever I was, like, 10, 11 years old. We came across one of those old TV channels that used to play movies throughout the night, and this was just starting. Sat down, watched it, fell in love with it. This is a movie that really does blend two eras like it blends the 80s but it also blends like the 50s 60s like hammer generation of horror and it kind of brings both of those styles together for a really great one of the best horror comedies probably probably my favorite horror comedy of all time to be honest with you i love chris sarandon in the role of jerry dandridge and i actually just met chris sarandon at megacon so that was pretty awesome i got him to autograph a picture from my daddy but uh, I love this movie, and I love the sequel, too. Can't wait to talk about that one. I just got introduced to that one by my buddy Joey Sasso here uh, about a month ago. This is better than Christmas. And uh, cannot wait to talk about that one in the next video. But Fright Night, absolutely one of those classic vampire movies that's endlessly rewatchable and totally timeless for me. And now we have Hellraiser, and we have such sights to show you. But you're only making it up to bloody good time. Look... I just reviewed all the Hellraiser movies last year. I've watched most of them for the very first time. It is not a very good horror franchise. That's not news. I'm not the first person to say that. I'm not the one millionth person to say that. But even this original film, while I would say pretty tight argument of being the best of the franchise, I don't find it to be a classic. There's a lot of elements to it that I think are cool, very unique, and I could see why it created, if nothing else, the horror icon that Pinhead is. Didn't create a great franchise, but I can see the iconic nature of a lot of the parts of this movie. There's still quite a few things about it that just don't really merit a movie that I'm going to go back to all that often. So I love the concept. I love the, the gothic era style to it. I love the gore. Uh, I love how intense the storyline is. And, and Clive Barker is one of those guys. He's got a pretty fucked up imagination. So I do like this movie. But for the best of the franchise, it's still not one of the greatest of all time in my mind. Now we have James Wan's Insidious. And I got to be honest, I have really dropped my reception of this movie quite a bit. I'm sticking it in kills two hours. I used to love this movie. When it first came out, I was shouting from the rooftops how awesome this original movie was. I was like, finally, something unique in the haunted house genre. James Wan, man, he's just kicking ass. This is great. Can't wait to see more. And when I rewatched it for last year's 31 on 31, I found that a lot of the elements that I used to love have not aged quite so well. There's a lot of scares in this movie that are only just startles because of that loud, like, string instrument score that he puts in this movie. And it started to give me a headache to a certain degree. I still think it's creative. I still think the whole astral projection and all of that is really unique for a haunting movie. And I still think that there's there was potential to leave this as just a standalone film with that ending and have it just to be a great standalone movie. But it created a decent franchise. It's just a movie that, I, for whatever reason, has aged poorly in the short amount of time that it has been out there for us to watch. And now we have Jeepers Creepers, and this, for me, is still one of the greatest horror movies, one of the greatest monster movies of all time. Yes, I know all of the history with the director. I... I loved this movie for years before I found that out, so I cannot watch this movie and have that be something that affects my experience. I just watched the movie as a movie, and so I still love this. To me, this was a movie that came out of absolutely nowhere. I didn't know anything about it. I rented it on Halloween night when it came out and watched it and was just blown away and was ready to tell everybody I knew how awesome it was, and it still holds up. Again, didn't create the best franchise in the world. I don't have a whole lot of hope for this reboot either, but this original movie was such a great, unique concept, such a great throwback to classic monster movies, and just genuinely unnerving and scary that I still hold it as one of my favorite horror flicks ever. Now we are at the original Friday the 13th, and just like I said in my Friday the 13th tier list, 
It's going and kills two hours, but it's funny how the original film in Friday the 13th is one of those few originals that break that rule of the original is always best. There's very few horror franchises out there where the fan base as a majority tend to like one of the sequels more. And you would be hard pressed to find people that love the original Friday the 13th the most. I don't know if it's because Jason's not in it. I don't know if it's because they tend to have more fun with the concept later on. But nonetheless, the original Friday the 13th is okay. Look, full disclosure, I'm not the biggest fan of that franchise. I've never been. I love the character of Jason, and I do have my favorites in that franchise that I genuinely love. But this original film is exactly what they say that it is, what they fully admit to it is. It is a very, very, very low budget, cheap knockoff of Halloween. And while the stories certainly have no similarities whatsoever, they just ramped up the gore, threw in this half-assed whodunit aspect that doesn't quite work because we never meet Pamela Voorhees until she's revealed as the killer. And it is really only iconic because of Tom Savini's kills and the fact that it created this huge long-running franchise. I think that if Friday the 13th stayed a one and done for whatever reason, it would not be as highly regarded as it is today. But that's just my opinion. It's fine. I can have fun with it if I'm in the mood for it. I certainly don't dread watching it, but it's one of those original movies that I think is far, 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 far from being a horror classic. The original Evil Dead, I am sticking up in bloody good time. That's another franchise that I'm a very casual fan with. I enjoy it. I certainly have movies where I love in the franchise, and I have times where I'm in the mood for Evil Dead, and only Evil Dead can satisfy that mood. So I do like Ash. I do like the Deadites. I like the whole lore of this franchise, and I'm really looking forward to Evil Dead Rise. And the Evil Dead, I actually am one of the few people that thinks that's one of the best ones in the franchise. I do not prefer Evil Dead 2 to the original Evil Dead. You don't hear that very often. I think that the very low budget uh, aspect to the Evil Dead actually adds to the horror. And I like that this one is a little bit more horror and not so much of the slapstick comedy. There's still elements of that here, but it's predominantly horror. It's there to disturb you. It's there to give you those kind of icky vibes. And I think that a lot of the low budget effects actually add to that. It's got a lot of charm to it. So I really do like this original Evil Dead. Bloody good time it is. Now we have the original Alien. Many would say one of the best sci-fi horror classics of all time. For me, it's going in bloody good time simply because I've always been more of an Aliens guy. Uh, the original Alien, Ridley Scott, is one of the best sci-fi horror films as far as kind of being a slasher in space. Uh, I love the creativity there as far as creating the concept of the xenomorph. I wish I could see the, the, the crowd reactions or experience this movie back in the 70s when it first came out, when that chestburster scene comes out especially. It's a movie where if you don't know where it's heading, it certainly takes a lot of twists and turns. Got some really good care is great production and set design and everything it's just a, it, it's a movie that it's so simplistic with its futuristic concepts that it ages very well but it's a little bit slow for me and I'm somebody who always prefers the more fast-paced a little bit more intense side of the alien franchise hence me being a little bit more of an aliens fan now moving on to Candyman, another one of those movies that I was introduced to way too late in life but it is a absolute horror classic to me to me, this is the best slasher of the 90s in competition with Scream. Uh, this is one of those franchises that is not very good, but the original film had so much more merit and so much more credit that it deserved than it ever really got. It kind of gets lumped in with that whole era of wonky, bad slashers like, you know, Wishmaster and Leprechaun and that whole era where they were trying to recreate horror icons and just couldn't quite get there. Candyman is the best of all of those by a country mile. I love the fact that it mixes in like this gothic folk tale with horror. It's just as much about horror as it is about like legends and fables and how stories can take over a community. And Tony Todd in the role of Candyman is absolutely brilliant. And this is the best of, of his performances in this franchise by far. I love Virginia Madsen as the final girl here, or if you don't want to call her final girl, the protagonist of the movie. <laughs> get people that get weird little arguments about that. Nonetheless, I love her as the main character. I think that she is a great foil for the whole story with Candyman and the way that she kind of incorporates herself into that legend by the end of the movie. There's some really good kills. It's just, it's an absolute brilliant movie to me. It's very, very underrated. And I'm hoping that the most recent movie that 
most people liked, will get more people to go back and check out this original classic. And now we have Child's Play, and most of you should not be surprised, but some might, that I'm sticking it in bloody good time. I absolutely adore the Child's Play franchise. It's up there with Nightmare on Elm Street for me of my favorite slasher franchises, but I do prefer a lot of the sequels to the original. The original is a great movie. Tom Holland is a fantastic horror director, very underappreciated person in the horror uh, sphere, the horror community, but this first film, as good as it is, and as much of a great start to the franchise as it is, I just think that these sequels have topped it because they fully realize the character of Chucky. Chucky is the star of the show from beginning to end in all of the sequels. So you have some of the best sequels in the franchise that I always go back and rewatch those before I rewatch this original film where he's more in the shadows and it's more POV and kind of a mystery if he's the killer. And so he doesn't really show up in full force until over half of the movie is done with. So that is my reasons why this is not quite not quite top tier for me, but it is damn close. If any of these movies are just teetering on that line, this is it. Now we have the original Resident Evil in the Paul W.S. Anderson franchise, and this kills two hours. It's an okay movie. I don't think it deserves the level of hate that it gets. Some of the sequels do, but the original film is fine. It's not a very good adaptation of the video games, but for a horror action movie, it's entertaining. You know, it's always been one of those movies that I'm a very, very casual fan of. I can throw it on, have a decent enough time for two hours with it, but it's not a movie that I would ever, like, die on a mountaintop trying to defend, I will tell you that. Now we have the original Omen, and this is one of the best, if not my favorite horror film from the 70s. Absolutely adore The Omen. I think that this is a movie that is timeless in the fact that it's a really nice, slow peeling back the onion as far as the story. You introduce this concept that this little kid might be the son of the devil, and especially if you are a parent, that is a theme, that is a storyline that is absolutely horrifying to you because imagine if somebody told you your child that you have raised, that you love more than you love yourself, is going to bring about the end of the world and the only way to prevent that is by stabbing them with five or six blades. I don't know a parent on this earth that would have a good time with that revelation. So uh, it, it's a movie that's just executed brilliantly by Richard Donner. You have just these slow sense of dread that builds throughout this. I love the concept in the first couple of movies with the actual omen where they see these pictures that depict how they are going to die at some point, And then eventually we see like this Final Destination style death. Uh, and I think that a lot of the acting is really good here. If anything, I might say that maybe the performance of Gregory Peck ages a little bit just because he's a very old school style actor, but even with that being said, this movie does not lose a single drip of awesome for me. I love to revisit it. One of the best horror classics of all time. Now we have Final Destination, and this first one is going up into bloody good time. This is a franchise that I was a fan of from Jump Street. I remember seeing the trailer, and I was a big Devin Sawa fan at the time, and just could not wait to go see this, and I loved it. It was one of my favorite theater experiences because uh, I was just not ready for how much of a thrill ride this was going to be. This was a movie that was very much just built around creating these little kill scenes and audience reactions in these first couple of movies whenever these kills just came out of nowhere and the gore at the time was pretty intense. It was a very fun movie to see in the theaters. And it's held up really well. It's not my favorite of the franchise, but uh, as, far as, the, as far as the original concept and these original cast of characters and being a movie that kicked off one of the better modern horror franchises, I still think it's pretty damn good. Oh, now we are at wrong turn, and I'm going to stick this in Kills 2 Hours. This is a franchise that uh, is possibly my least favorite franchise that I have ever done a review series for. Now that's mostly because of the sequels. I think that this movie as well as the remake are actually pretty good, but uh, The Wrong Turn, is, even at its best, is a very B-movie Texas Chainsaw ripoff. I mean, this is just trying to be that with cannibals, with, with these inbred cannibals rather than uh, some family in Texas. So you get a group of hot 20-somethings together, you unleash them in the woods, and you you have these three inbred uh, hillbilly cannibals. Take them out one by one. Some pretty decent kills, some good gore. I like some of the actors here, like Eliza Dushku is good. I, I really like the dude from Dexter, Desmond Harrington. I like him as a lead guy. 
And um, I like Jeremy Sisto as well, even though he's not a very big role in this movie. So I have fun with this one, but every time I rewatch it, I'm reminded like, oh yeah, solid three star movie. Now we're at the original Saw, and I don't know if this is gonna be divisive or not, but I'm sticking it in Kills Two Hours. I've never found this movie to be anywhere near as awesome as people make it out to be. I think people stick onto their experience of seeing that twist ending and how surprised they were, and that kind of overshadows their entire reception of this movie. I think that it was original for the time. I think that it was a neat idea for sure. I was as surprised as anybody else at the ending whenever Jigsaw stood up, and there is certainly some gnarly kills slash traps in this original movie that was very unique at the early stages of like that torture porn era of the 2000s. But I think that there are sequels in the Saw franchise that have done it better. I don't think the franchise as a whole is very good because there's a lot of sequels in this franchise that I don't think are all that great. And I think that the one of the lead performances by Carrie Elways is borderline insufferable. I think that that guy is when he's given the right role, like something in Liar Liar, he's pretty good, but this movie especially, I think that he is god-awful. His line delivery, his acting, it pulls me out of the movie every single scene that he is in, every single time that I watch the movie. So he is the main element that derails this entire film to me. If he was replaced or his character was taken out or whatever, I might like it a little bit more, but it's a movie that I do not particularly enjoy rewatching because one of the main elements and main characters of the film just drive me nuts. Now we are at the Predator. Now, this for me, absolutely one of my favorite films of all time. Whether you're talking about it in the sense of a horror film or an action film, I think that it's almost 50-50. This is one of the best Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, one of the best movies of the 80s. I just love it. It's one of those endlessly rewatchable, macho-as-fuck movies. I call this the manliest movie of all time. Uh, I think that it was a great original concept. I think that the Predator is possibly the coolest design for an alien villain of all time, and that's a tall order when you're talking about a franchise like uh, Alien and the Xenomorph. I will take the Predator over the Xenomorph. I think that it's one of the few Arnold Schwarzenegger movies where he doesn't overshadow everything, where he's not the biggest piece of the movie. It feels more like a really great sci-fi horror action movie that just happens to star Arnold Schwarzenegger rather than an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie like Commando or something to where he's the main thing that you're watching. So there's so many things I could say about this. I gush about this movie. It's pretty much a perfect film to me. Absolutely love it. Now we are at Leprechaun, uh, very close in competition with Wrong Turn for my least favorite franchise that I've ever reviewed and ranked. And I'm putting the original in Kills 2 Hours. I think that the original is easily the best of this franchise. It's not great, you know, even on the best day when you watch it, when you're in the mood on St. Patrick's Day, it's still just okay, um, but it's fun. You know, it's a goofy, fun B-movie that I have fun with. You know, Warwick Davis, I like in this role. I think it's funny to see Jennifer Aniston before she was Jennifer Aniston. There's some pretty decent uh, goofy kills. I like some of the characters here, namely Ozzy and uh, the little brother. I can't remember his name, but like the, the movie's just fun. If you're on board for it and you're in the mood for this shitty little B-movie slasher, it can really fill that void for you. But if you start stacking it up against a lot of the other classics that I have on this list, it does not measure up for sure. And finally, we are at Underworld, and I don't know if we're gonna have room for this. Oh, cool, all right, it makes a little bit of room for it. This is going in bloody good time. I think that this movie, as well as the sequel, Underworld Evolution, are actually very underrated. I, I, this one especially, I really like the lore that it brings. It's a lot more mythic and a lot more well thought out than people give it credit for. Uh, I love vampires and werewolves. This is one of the few times that I think they do pretty damn good justice to both of those monsters. And I like kind of the feud and the rivalry that they set up as far as the lore here, where you have the vampires that are kind of the high class uh, dickheads and the werewolves that are kind of the low class uh, people that are revolting, and I think it adds some pretty decent commentary in there. There's a lot of things that you can unpack with this movie. There's aspects of it that I don't love. I think that for all the buildup that we have for Michael Corvin, that he's going to be like the most baddest monster of all time, just for him to not look all that impressive for one, but also kind of get his ass kicked in the third act of the movie, that was a little weird. I think he's used better in the sequel, but uh, I really do 
enjoy the ride that you go on with this franchise for the first couple of films. So I am a fan and it goes in bloody good time as far as I'm concerned. All right, guys, that does it for chapter one of this horror franchise tier list series. So click over here if you want to check out my child's play tier list ranking that I did most recently. And I'm also going to put the playlist for the rest of these horror franchise tier lists. If you're watching this in the future, please like and share this video and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss them as they're released. Thank you for watching as always. And remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.